Hello, my friends. If you are someone who really loves to think strategically, who loves to pursue deep and meaningful goals, and who loves introspection, then this video is for you. Today, we're going to talk about a term that I coined called an ambitious introvert. So I got an email the other day from someone on my list asking, what exactly is an ambitious introvert? And today I really want to talk about what ambitious introversion is and also ways that if you identify with this, then you'll be able to leverage your strengths so that you can achieve whatever it is that you want with ease and grace. So let's get into it. I want to paint a little bit of a picture here for you because I first came up with this idea when I read the book by Susan Cain called Quiet, which is a book that really talks about the strength of introversion and how introverts are actually undervalued in a lot of the world that we live in because we are geared from a global perspective to move towards extroversion, meaning that we have a very busy way of living, we like bold, outgoing, loud kind of places and people and the people who love to regain energy from being in groups and networking generally find that they have more of a presence in corporate spaces. Whereas introverts really love refueling and recharging through solitude and introspection and finding some time alone so that they can gather their thoughts and come up with ideas by being on their own. And if, if you've got any questions about extroversion and introversion, you might want to check out this video that I've posted here. There's also a link in the show notes so that you can become accustomed to the differences between extroverts and introverts and how you as someone who is here looking for some solutions and to be coached can identify with either introversion, extroversion, or ambiversion. I do discuss that in the video and find yourself in spaces where you can be truly supported to bring forth anything that you've got in your heart out into the world by leveraging your strengths. But today's video, we're going to talk about introversion and in particular introverts who are specifically ambitious. Back to the book that Susan wrote, this book completely changed my life because in it, Susan delves into the psychology and the neuroscience of introversion. She offers insights into how we as introverts think, how we work, how we interact with others. And she argues in the book that introverts bring valuable skills to the table, such as deep thinking, creativity, and the ability to focus intensely on tasks. Almost every single page that I read, I felt seen and acknowledged. I realized through reading this book that I was quite naturally following Susan's practical advice before knowing it. And in that, I became really comfortable with the way I was navigating a world that I often felt misunderstood in. In this book, she encourages introverts to embrace their natural tendencies and use their unique strengths to succeed in various aspects of life. That includes work and relationships and personal growth. Now, if you have not yet read the book Quiet, I highly recommend that you do. I've left a link in the show notes for you to grab a copy. And if you enjoy the book, there's also a journal that you can purchase to accompany the book. And so I read the book first and then journaled about it. And in the journal, she takes you through a whole bunch of different questions that help you to realize your skills as an introvert and to go out into the world and do the very things that you have realized as part of your writing exercises. Anyway, let's look at the two words, ambition and introversion independently, and then we can pop them together to make meaning of them. So the word ambitious, this word refers to having a strong desire and determination to achieve success, goals, aspirations. It often refers to this feeling deep within like a drive to attain something significant or noteworthy, whether that be in your career, your personal life, or any other endeavors. Now, typically ambitious people are motivated. They're proactive. They're willing to put in the effort and the work to reach their goals and objectives. And so I always think about ambition as the willingness to take on challenges and pursue long-term achievements. It's one thing knowing how to, but the willingness, that's what changes it all. That's what actually makes you ambitious. And then we have the word introvert. Now, an introvert 
as I mentioned, is a person who tends to be a little bit more reserved, but more than that, reflective and inward focused. Introverts often feel more energized and comfortable in solitary or small group settings, which is why I have always created group coaching programs with no more than 10 or 12 people in because the people that I tend to coach gravitate towards introverts because we all really like refueling our energy in the same way. We all prefer quieter environments over large social gatherings and we are all typically more introspective. So we enjoy deep thinking and spending time alone or with close friends rather than seeking out extensive social interactions. Now, introverts often excel in activities that require concentration, focus, and detailed work. They may take longer to express themselves in social situations, and they prefer meaningful conversations over small talk. This is something that I have always really struggled with, actually, because if I'm in a boardroom situation and everybody is firing ideas out and it's a workshop type scenario, I find myself quite reserved in those situations because I'm taking all of this information in. It takes me a little while to process all of that information before I can come up with something really good. And if the people that I'm with don't recognize that and value my opinion, I can quite easily be talked over and completely ignored. I feel invisible in that situation. So as I've gotten to know myself a little bit better, I have placed myself in situations with people who value my opinion and who really do give me the space and the time to process the information so I can come up with something that's super valuable. Now, it's important to note that being introverted is not the same as being shy. Okay, introverts can enjoy social interactions, but we simply find them draining over time and we do need solitude to recharge. Now, let's put the two words together an ambitious introvert. Now, this refers to an individual who combines the qualities of introversion with a strong drive to achieve personal and professional goals. Now, these individuals, like myself and you, because you're watching, we are characterized by our inward focus, our reflective nature, and our preference for, like I said, quiet or solitary environments, along with a clear and determined pursuit of and for success. Let's explore nine key traits of ambitious introverts that set us apart and also how you can leverage these traits. Firstly, intrinsic motivation. We are motivated by our own inner workings. This is where it's really important for you to understand your values, your passions, so that you can align your goals with what truly matters to you, rather than seeking external validation for the things that you see other people value. Now, intrinsic motivation means that your drive to achieve comes from within. So rather than seeking all of the things that you should be doing, you need to set goals that resonate deeply with what you believe is important and meaningful. This is your internal compass and it will guide your actions and your decisions and it will allow you to pursue endeavors that truly matter to you, even if, and here's the kicker, even if they don't always align with societal expectations or external rewards. Now, this self-directed motivation will help you to stay committed and resilient in the face of challenges because your efforts are fueled by a genuine desire to fulfill your aspirations and ideals. I've always been passionate about human resources and coaching. When I was in the field, I recognized the potential for real impact, but Despite a successful career in corporate HR, I felt called to something deeper and more meaningful. It wasn't just about climbing the corporate ladder or collecting accolades. It was really about aligning my work with my core values of authenticity, growth, and helping others achieve. Driven by this intrinsic motivation, I transitioned from a traditional HR role into holistic coaching. I began studying various coaching methods and mindfulness practices and emotional intelligence techniques, and I channeled my energy into creating a space where I could work with introspective leaders and help them with supporting them in their own transformation. My goal wasn't to seek external recognition, but rather to foster a profound and lasting impact on the lives of my clients. Now, this journey wasn't without challenges. It required me stepping out of my comfort zone and embracing new skills and perspectives. But the commitment to helping others achieve sustainable success and inner peace kept me grounded. Most people thought I was crazy because the money that I was earning as a corporate HR executive was pretty good. And I gave that up so that I could 
start a practice as a holistic therapist and coach. And now I feel like my internal compass is right on track because when I have a client that is able to navigate their personal and professional life with great grace and authenticity, I feel the deepest amount of reward. Number two, thoughtful planning. Ambitious introverts are actually really good at planning because they excel at detailed reflection, setting clear, well-defined goals. And they always approach things with intentional action and purposeful intention. Now, this thoughtful planning and reflection, your thoughtful approach ensures that every action you take is intentional and purposeful. So when you align your core values and your long-term vision, you will then be able to navigate complex situations with confidence because you've carefully considered all aspects of making decisions. And if you prioritize reflection and strategic thinking, you can then chart a course that's not only achievable, but also deeply fulfilling, ensuring that your efforts are always aligned with your true desires and your aspirations. I want to talk a little bit about reflection because the idea of taking time to consider your goals, your experiences, your strategies, all of this will help you to gain deeper insights, understand your motivations and refine your plans to align with your values and aspirations. And this is what we term reflection. So it allows you to evaluate things that have happened to learn from your experiences and then adjust your approach to ensure that your efforts are meaningful and effective. And I want to go into a couple of tips for effective reflection here too, because I feel like this is one of the most important parts of uh, leveraging your strengths. So firstly, I want you to schedule time for reflection, and this has to be regular. It either has to be time per day or time per week, or I mean, if you can't manage it, then time a month, but should take time at least at the very least, once a month to reflect on your progress, your goals, your experiences. You could do a quiet morning routine where you sit and journal, or you could do that in the evening, of course. I do this every single morning. I do something called morning pages. I sit, set aside 10 minutes and I just write down everything that's going on in my mind. And then from there, I spend another 10 minutes just reflecting on what I've just written down. I reflect not always by journaling, but sometimes just by contemplating. I think about the things that I've written, recognize the patterns in what I've written, the way that my writing is probably geared towards problems or solutions or feelings. And I just take time to reflect. I know people who use a reflection journal to write down thoughts, insights, and observations. And you can indeed do this to help you clarify your goals, track your progress, and identify patterns for improvement that way too. The second thing I want to speak to you about is to ask thoughtful questions. So whether you're contemplating or journaling, you can ask questions like, what went well today? What went well this week? What challenges did I face? How can I prove, how can I improve my approach? And this will really help guide your reflection process. Number three is to review and analyze your goals. You regularly want to visit your goals to assess their relevance and alignment with your values. And then you want to adjust them as needed based on your reflections. I have a workbook that will really help you set meaningful goals that will help you align them with your values and your passions. There's a link in the show notes below. It's called the Goal Getter Workbook. It's an intense book because it has everything that you will ever need to set meaningful goals. It's a long book, but believe me, if you go through this once and you set goals, you are more likely to achieve them because they align with what's going on in your heart space rather than just plucking an idea out of the sky and then trying to run with it, quite possibly burning yourself out in the process. Number four is to seek feedback. Occasionally, not all the time, but you might want to seek input from trusted mentors and peers because these perspectives can provide additional insights and help to refine your plans. Number five, and this is an important one, practice mindfulness. Engage in these techniques to enhance self-awareness and focus during the reflection. Of course, of course, I've got you here. There's a program that I have created called Conscious, Calm and Clear. It is completely free. It takes you through six days of mindfulness practices to help you connect more deeply with your thoughts and your feelings. Also in the show notes below for you to access today. Number five, did I say five? Number six, I don't know. We're on actionable steps. You want to take all of the reflections that you've then done and create clear actionable steps to implement any changes or improvements. And this will ensure that your reflections lead to purposeful actions. I have created something called the quiet power planner. It's also free. I know all of these things are free, which will really help you take everything that you've put as part of your goal get workbook and 
put it into a place where you can plan along the way, continue to maintain that you're aligned with your vision. So when you incorporate all of these reflection practices, you can ensure that your planning remains thoughtful, aligned with your personal goals and values, and it will lead you to more intentional and effective progress. Okay, let's go back to the ways in which your unique strengths as an ambitious introvert can be leveraged so that you can do your best work in the world. Number three is independent work. Introverts actually thrive in environments where you can focus deeply on your tasks. You can often find solitary work will allow you to tap into your creativity and productivity without distractions. You want to create a dedicated workspace. You want to establish a routine. You want to work with your goals and use some time management techniques. But the main important thing here is that Make space in your life, in your work life for independent work. You don't always have to work as a group. You don't always have to contribute. Your work is actually done best when you are in solitude and you have big blocks of time to dedicate to your creativity. Yeah. So you want to minimize distractions, turn off the notifications, limit social media apps and create some boundaries around your workspace to ensure that your work environment remains distraction free. I love leveraging deep work sessions. So I schedule blocks of uninterrupted time for tasks that require intense concentration. And I just get into the state of flow and it's just so beautiful and I love it so much. And that's actually where my best work comes from. This is another thing that Almost sounds counterintuitive to what I've just said, but you have to take regular breaks. You have to incorporate short breaks so that you can recharge and avoid mental fatigue. So say, for example, you've got morning of deep reflection and deep work. You might want to take an hour or two just to go for a beautiful walk in the middle of the day before you come back and continue with that or get back to work on something else. You definitely want to take breaks because this is really going to help you to recharge. It almost helps you to process everything that you've just done. I think of it like in yoga, we do our practice and then we lie down for Shavasana. And Shavasana is a practice where you lie flat on the floor with your palms facing the sky and it can be anything between five and 10 minutes, sometimes even 15, if you're lucky enough to have that space. And you allow your body to absorb everything that you've just taught it as part of the practice. And of course, with yoga, you're using energy medicine and breath work and all these things that are so beautifully combined to bring about transformation and change within the physical body, the emotional body, the mental body. And then the Shavasana is an opportunity for all of those lessons that you've just taught your body to assimilate and to land in the physical body. And I think about regular breaks in the same way. So most people would think about taking regular breaks as wasting time. And I actually think that it's most productive to do that because you're allowing yourself time to reflect and review. Even if you're not thinking about the project, your mind, your body, your energy is assimilating and processing that information. So please take regular breaks as often as you possibly can. And number four, and the things that you're so good at is that you can go deep as opposed to wide. So instead of spreading yourself thin wide, I want you to think about how you have the ability to delve deeply into subjects that you're passionate about. So depth over breadth, couple this with slow productivity, where you can take a slow productive approach to align perfectly with your preferences or depth over breadth, rather than juggling multiple tasks or projects simultaneously, you can focus on fewer areas, which will allow you to delve deeply and develop substantial expertise. Slow productivity, a term that I learned through reading a book by Carl Newport, where he emphasizes quality and intentionality over speed and quantity. So for introverts, this means that you dedicate ample time to fully understand and master your chosen subject. You concentrate your efforts on one area at a time, and then you produce work that is both meaningful and high caliber, free from the pressures of multitasking and constant hustle. Music to my ears. This thoughtful approach to productivity enables you to work at your own pace, and it ensures that each project receives attention and contributes to your long-term goals and visions. So when you integrate depth over breadth, With slow productivity, you will achieve balanced and fulfilling work and you'll foster professional growth and personal satisfaction. All right, my friends, we are halfway there. Stay with me. I'm going to try and speed this up. So we have selective social interactions as one of the things that you can leverage as a strength. Quality over quantity is your mantra with this one. You value meaningful connections and relationships, often seeking out mentors and friends who support your ambitions. 
The art of saying no is going to be pivotal in you leveraging the strength here. You really want to maintain your focus and well-being at all times. And that may often mean that you decline invitations or requests that don't align with who you are, your goals, your visions, your values, so that you can help yourself preserve your energy and time for what truly matters. Which brings me to a couple of tips for saying no gracefully. I have learned this throughout my years and I've become really good at it because I've practiced it and I have absolutely mucked this up at times. But the ways that I have found to deliver this message in the most kind and caring way is firstly to be honest and direct. You can politely explain that you have other commitments or need to focus on other projects. Remember, clear is kind. This is something I took from Brene Brown. Clear is kind. So clear communication helps others understand your position without feeling hurt. You can also offer other alternatives. Instead of saying, oh, I don't want to do that or no, I don't have time. You could say Friday dinner is just not going to work for me, but how about we meet up on Sunday morning for a brunch? Yeah. So this shows that that you're willing to be flexible without overextending yourself. You want to practice assertiveness. So when you make a decision not to do something, be confident in your decision. You don't have to over explain yourself. You don't have to justify the reasons why you're not doing it. It's okay to prioritize your needs and your boundaries without needing to tell everyone why you're doing it. Just when you've decided that it's a no, say no. Build up your body language so that it supports that no. And then, like I said, you can offer other alternatives if you'd like to. There's a standard response that I have used for the longest time. And it really helped me to bridge the gap between being a yes person and then learning how to decline gracefully. And that was, I'm not sure if I'm available. Can I get back to you on that one? Another one you could use is, I appreciate the invitation, but I need to decline because I have something else going on. Right. So think about a standard response. It has to be simple and respectful and needs to span across many different scenarios so that it could just be one standard response. Like I said, mine was, I'm not sure if I'm available. I'm not sure I'm available. Can I get back to you? And that's really worked for me because it helped to move from that. Yes, people pleasing part of me it's overextended, wanting to do everything and the fear of missing out part of me to moving towards a part of me that really feels grounded and comfortable with saying no. You might even want to rehearse this. You want to practice saying no in low stakes situations to build your confidence with one person that you truly trust and that you feel comfortable with. And then from there, you can branch out and say no to larger groups. All right, now we're on number six, which is resilience and persistence. Your reflective nature, as I've said, will help you stay grounded and it will help you to overcome challenges. What I really want you to focus on here is to zoom out and to remember that you're playing the long game. You, as an ambitious introvert, you will excel at taking a broader perspective and focusing on long-term success rather than immediate results. You're not really interested in slapdashing it. You're not interested in what's going to happen tomorrow. You're more interested in what's going to happen over the long term in five years from now, 10 years from now, or I mean, even a month or two months, right? Depends on what it is that you're working on. And because of your reflective nature, you have the ability to take a step back and to view everything with a bird's eye view. And then you can make more strategic decisions based on what you see. So by zooming out, out, you can see beyond the day-to-day -day grind and you can prioritize your actions to align them with your long-term vision and goals. This will help you to remain patient and persistent. And because you can do this, you understand that significant achievements require time and sustained effort. So invest in gradual, deliberate progress. It's totally fine that you do that. In fact, I encourage you to do that because as an ambitious introvert, this is your strength. You recognize that playing the long game involves building solid foundations and developing deep expertise and nurturing meaningful relationships. This is so strategic and I love it. It's so sexy because it ensures that your efforts are not just reactive, but they're carefully planned to achieve lasting, impactful outcomes. So stay focused on your ultimate goals, adapt them to changing circumstances, and then make informed decisions that contribute to enduring success. All right, my friends, we have another three to go. The seventh one is balanced approach. This is important. You have to understand balance. This is an embodied experience that you have to play around with until you know it so well, because this will help you avoid burnout and prioritize true capital, true self-care to achieve sustainable success. Let's talk about true self-care. 
You've heard it here first, folks. True self-care is slowing down, embracing the art of slowing down. I realize I'm talking very fast, but I'm trying to get some information to you super quick. Normally, I would be speaking rather slow, but I have a lot of information to cover. So this approach involves stepping back from the constant rush and allowing space for rest and reflection. By intentionally slowing down, you create opportunities to recharge, gain clarity, and reconnect with your inner so that you can go out in the world and do your best work. This will help you to avoid burnout and maintain a sustainable pace in the pursuit of your goals. Slowing down is not just something that you do with your body. It's something that you do with your mind, which is half the battle because you need to learn how to just slow it right down. And this is where mindfulness, meditation, and even movement practices can help you get out of your head and into your body so that you can create circuit breakers so you can slow your mind down right so I love to do various things that help me slow down which include things like I mentioned before meditation mindfulness movement but also reading fictional books going for beautiful hikes watching movies and shows all of these things that we're taught are wrong or that we shouldn't be doing I really find them helpful because it helps my mind slow down and it helps me to foster a healthier, more fulfilling path to success that honors both my ambitions and my well-being. Number eight is analytical and strategic thinking, which I've touched on before. And because of this, you have the ability to navigate complex challenges and make informed decisions, setting realistic and achievable goals. You are incredible at problem solving and you are really good at analyzing data, assessing situations critically and thinking strategically, which allows you to set realistic goals. The other thing that comes in with this is that you can sniff out the BS from a mile away. Introverts have a keen ability to detect insincerity and falsehoods. Yep, you heard it right. Because you have a reflective nature and strong analytical skills. So this enables you to see through superficial claims and identify what's genuine. But you will only see this if you slow down and you give yourself time to reflect and process because it's a very discerning approach that that only that is only activated when you've given yourself some space and time to figure it out. And the more you practice this, the shorter the amount of time you need to figure it out because it's a feeling in your body that you'll be able to pick and see, but you'll be able to filter out misleading information and stay true to your core values. Your intuition will skyrocket because by ensuring that you're grounded in authenticity and integrity, you have this ability to sniff it out a mile away. And my friends, number nine, we finally got there, is that you have a quiet confidence. You believe in your abilities and you let your actions speak louder than words. Because your commitment is intrinsic and the work is meaningful to you, you don't require external accountability or validation. You focus on the value you bring and the results that you achieve rather than seeking recognition or announcing all of your achievements. And this authentic self-assurance allows you to pursue your goals with grace, knowing that your dedication and the quality of your work is really what matters here. It's not necessarily about what everybody else thinks, how you have to get everybody on your side for it, because you're doing something that really matters to you. It doesn't actually matter what other people think. And so you have this beautiful, quiet confidence about you that can translate into presence if you're in a social situation. Hopefully by now you have considered whether or not you're an ambitious introvert. And if you are, you have gained some important insights into what your strengths are and how you can leverage them to live the life that you were always meant to live. Thank you so much for being here. If you love what you've heard and you want some more, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so that you get notified of any new episodes as they drop. If you haven't yet watched my video on the myths of introversion, then here it is right here. Watch it next. Bye for now.